All right. Well, good evening, everyone. It is nine o'clock Eastern time, uh, possibly a different time wherever you are at. My name is Lee Natero, and I will be your host tonight. Tonight, we're going to be hearing from Bernadette Andre Salgrino on disruptive numbers, a tool to teach mathematics for social justice. Would everyone please introduce themselves in the chat window, telling us what you teach, where you teach, and what your Twitter handle is, if you have one. I know people, have already, I know people have already begun to introduce themselves in the chat, telling us where you're from, but we'd also like to know what specifically you teach. Mm -hmm. It looks like we've got people from a variety of locations and not just middle school educators, but high school educators and possibly college educators as well. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, before I introduce our speaker, let me explain a little bit about how these meetings work. These meetings are recorded and are available approximately 24 hours after the meeting ends. To view the recording, you can use the same URL you used to get here tonight. The global math community prides itself on being friendly and supportive. The chat room is available for topical and general conversation throughout the meeting. I'll catch your questions for the presenter, so don't worry that the presenter won't notice your question in the chatter. Tonight, our speaker is Bernadette Andre Salgarino. She's a mathematics coordinator for the Santa Clara County Office of Education. She's a national board certified teacher in mathematics, a member of the California Mathematics Curriculum Framework and Evaluation Criteria Committee, the National Corps Advocate Network, Instructional Leadership Corps, and California Community of Practice Mathematics. She has been involved with statewide and nationwide work on advancing racial equity through the C California Mathematics Council and Todos Mathematics for All. She's leading professional learning on teaching mathematics for social justice, implicit bias in mathematics, and advancing equity to elevate student voice. She was awarded the Texas Instruments STEM Teacher of the Year in 2012 and the East Side Union High School District Teacher of the Year in 2013. Welcome, Bernadette. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, Greetings everyone, Mabuhay in my home language, Kablaawan kayo amin in my dialect. Um, I'm really, really happy to see a lot of um, fellow educators all over the world, from the Philippines, from Vietnam, um, uh, Canada, and different parts of our country. And um, to start, my webinar this evening, I humbly make a land acknowledgement and I would like to recognize and acknowledge the indigenous people of my town. I live in Mountain House, California, and our, our indigenous uh, tribes here are the Muwekma and the Yokuts. So wherever you may be, dear friends, I invite you to acknowledge the indigenous people of your town, your city, or your county. While a land acknowledgement is not enough, it is an important social justice and decolonial practice that promotes indigenous visibility. And a reminder that we are on a settled indigenous land. So let this land acknowledgement be an opening for all of us to con contemplate a way to join a decolonial and indigenous movements for the sovereignty and self-determination. In the um, and this is slide deck as well. There is a link to where you could uh, identify our indigenous uh, tribes that have um, lived in wherever place that you may be. So um, disruptive numbers. <clears throat> the session that I'm going, or the webinar that I'm going to share with you 
And before I share that, again, I, I just, I'm just so happy to uh, welcome you all. And I truly, sincerely appreciate your presence as we, all, as we are all navigating the intricacies of this pandemic that um, we are experiencing right now. And I hope you and your family are doing really well, safe and healthy. And as we continue to serve our students and their families, attention has been um, paid to educators connecting with students, which is extremely, extremely valuable and important in addition to teacher and student connection, peer collaboration is important for learning uh, as well as our social emotional well-being. And so here, disruptive numbers is a tool for us to take note of how we can pursue our goal to strive to truly hear and elevate the voices of our students. So a little bit about myself, um, I'm a daughter. Uh, both of my parents are educators. They're both elementary teachers, a sister to um, uh, uh, the eldest actually in a brood of five. I'm a mother to four wonderful ch children, two of whom are ser serving the military and a, uh, and a loving wife. I'm uh, currently, I'm a mathematics coordinator for the Santa Clara County Office of Education and prior to that, a high school teacher at Eastside Union High School District. But I'm actually, I came to the United States in 2002 um, through the teacher exchange program. And since then, I've, I've learned so much um, from um, the different aspects of the educational system here in the US. And I'm so, so thankful to learn from them and you know, expanding the different learning um, platforms that I could share. Uh, and thanks so much to Global Math Department because this is also an avenue to share the work that I've done throughout um, my stay here in the US and from my country as well, which is the Philippines. Um, this is a link to a virtual journal and um, Lee, if you could just help me drop the link to the chat as well. Um, this also navigates some of the thinking that we'll be experiencing this webinar. And so this is for you. Um, make a copy of it and um, take some, uh, jot down some notes of the important uh, things that I'll be sharing tonight. Uh, I, we've, um, Lee has invited everyone to, again, for those who just came in um, just lately, uh, please share your name, your organizational affiliation, or your, and your location, as well as one appreciation for the blessings that we receive day in, day out. I know we've experienced, this, um, experienced so many challenges, but we do know that we are also sharing some appreciation and blessings that we have in life. So the goal of this webinar has three things, to define disruptive numbers, the um, structure, the purpose, the overview, and how we can implement this in any learning space that we're in, engage in some tasks that demonstrate this disruptive numbers as a tool to promote discourse. And of course, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you some resources as well so that you can also begin to design your disruptive number activities. Um, here's the agenda. I'll be showing you some of review the purpose of disruptive numbers as a tool, the structure of it, engage some math activities, and of course, sharing you all the resources that I have. But before that, I'd like to engage you, dear friends, with um, something about the word disruptive. So what comes to mind when you hear the word disruptive? And um, Lee, if you could help me, um, drop in the chat as well this link that will send them to Mentimeter. And I would like to hear from you your maybe three words that uh, come to mind when you hear the word disruptive or when you think of the word disruptive. And while you are doing that, I'm also going to share my screen that will allow us to see some of the responses that you have. And let's see if this is going to work. Okay, let me know if you are seeing my screen right now. That tells us some of the words that you typed in into the Mentimeter, sharing some words that come to mind when you hear the word disruptive. 
Bernadette, are you going to share your screen on that in a moment then with us? Okay, so that means to say I am not being able to share right now, so let me try it again. <clears throat> That's okay. That gives them more time to think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'll cancel that. Lee, let me know if you can see my screen right now with the Mentimeter. Yes, we can see it. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> so as we populate this um, uh, uh, board, this is actually capturing the, um, uh, the words or phrases that you um, have identified or that you have shared about the word disruptive. And I wonder if refreshing this will help me capture a lot more of your words. There you are. So Lee, can you see the things that's on the board right now? Yes, we can see that change is the biggest word in the middle of that word cloud. <laughs> Thank you so much. That word cloud is actually um, that captured uh, all those words and phrases that you have shared in terms of the things that you think uh, when you hear the word disruptive. So right now I am going to stop sharing and we'll continue to use my slides. <clears throat> And let me know, Lee, if you um, are seeing my slide deck again. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. And so um, <clears throat> when asked in my previous presentations, um, using the answer garden as a tool as well, um, I've asked several of the participants and they've shared all of those different, wor different words and phrases as well that is linked to the word disruptive. What is interesting is that when <clears throat> I Googled the word disruptive, at the top, um, the top synonym is actually linked to education. And maybe because my digital footprint um, always search for articles about education. And as you can see, um, disruptive, the word disruptive is correlated to classroom behavior, uh, that someone is causing trouble, therefore stopping it is a response to disruptive. Um, at the bottom of it is the definition um, uh, in the business world and disruptive corresponds to changing the traditional ways to a newer, more innovative and effective way of doing things. And for me, this was enlightening. <laughs> this prompted me to reflect and think about the ways that I'm teaching and learning uh, mathematics for social justice. That concerns numbers and data. And so making me pause and reflect, as well as question, for whom is these numbers? Why does it matter? So it made me pay closer attention to and respond to the numbers that it impacts, that actually affecting the, the lives of our students and their families. And so disruptive innovation came to mind. And so um, the, the book written by Clayton Chris Christensen that was popularized uh, through the idea of disruptive innovation uh, made me think about how that may be uh, used to rethink the way we approach teaching and learning mathematics through social justice. and. In his book, <clears throat> he identified two types of technologies that businesses dealt with, um, sustainable technologies, those that allowed uh, uh, or businesses to incrementally improve its app operations on a predictable time frame. These technologies and the way they were incorporated into the business were primarily designed to allow companies to remain competitive or at least to maintain status quo. Does that ring a bell? 
The second one is disruptive technology in which the innovation is significantly, significantly altering the way consumers or industries or businesses operate. And so rethinking about that, this is something that I was thinking, why are we keeping the status quo? Why not thinking of some innovative ways to um, truly uplift the voices of our students? And if that um, challenging that and using some data that matters to kids or numbers that matters to the lives of our students will be something to, that I could start working on. And so that goes into the um, um, amplification of the work that I've been doing, which then I called it as disruptive numbers. So in the pursuit to challenge inequities in mathematics, teaching and learning, disruptive numbers is a tool to urge mathematics discourse to uncover hidden stories that perpetuate partisanship in our society. So this approach um, brought me to rethink about engaging our educators and students and their families in a safe and brave space to break the silence, to challenge the status quo, insist to equip our students with skills and knowledge to thrive in a society that is continuously changing. I learned, and I, I'm still learning, that you know, to use the numbers, be that data, to disrupt what often is the habits we formed of engaging students to teach mathematics in and out of class. So that a disruptive approach to education supersedes an older process, a product, a habit, challenging what has been institutionalized for many years. Some often are not working anymore, as evidenced by the data from PISA, from NAEP, our graduation rate rates, and so on and so forth. So um, I, again, look at this tool and use numbers and data to challenge the persistence of inequities that are present in our system in the mathematics education, our school system, our government, and to bring awareness about issues and challenges that our students face in their lives, supporting our students with better understanding to seek the truth about how these numbers or data impact their lives and their families and their communities. Provide them and us guidance and willingness to help plan for actions to address these issues, and also to strengthen when advocating for a betterment of the system they are in. Um, and so, as before, we're going to engage with several of these activities of disruptive numbers. I would also like to offer you these uh, some norms for critical dialogue. I know um, the dialogue that we have right now is through chats, and I. Really, really, um, truly appreciate um, a lot of the um, comments that you are bringing into our chat. That for this critical dialogue, please, I invite you to speak your truth. This means be open about the thoughts and feelings and not just saying what you think others want to hear. To assume positive intent and be responsible for that impact. To come with a learner stance. And I know there experience that discomfort because this norm acknowledging that discomfort is inevitable but especially in a dialogue about race as we unravel issues into the open let's welcome the feeling of discomfort as well in several of the presentations that i've done i also share this as our learning environment um, and this is from dismantlingracism.org and oftentimes I ask you students when I do this in class or teachers to select one or two of these norms as we continue to dialogue about racism, anti-racism, and dismantling oppression in and out of the learning spaces that are in. And so I invite you of these different norms that I have in this slide deck, which one or two would you like to focus on during this webinar. And I invite you to share that in the chat as well. Hmm. 
Mm. Thank you so much. And I'll be prepared for messiness. Be comfortable with silence. Thank you so much. Take risks and speak honestly. All those are different components of something that we can think about as we start engaging in this, um, in the uh, next set of activities that I'm going to for uh, that I'm going to have you engaged with. But before that, I'm also I'm I'm also inspired about what Par Parker Palmer has has always messaged to us about knowing ourselves, knowing who we are, where we are, in the context of the situation we're in. When I do not know myself, I cannot know who my students are. I will see them through a glass darkly in the shadows of my unexamined life. And when I cannot see them clearly, I cannot teach them well. I invite you, dear friends, to also challenge to know more about yourself. Knowing ourselves as mathematics learner and teacher contributes to co-constructing the learning spaces that disrupt the dominant paradigm. Therefore, sharing the power and authority with our students in acquiring the necessary skills and knowledge to effect the change we're striving to work towards is imperative. This represents both a pedagogical strategy as well as a political stance. So let's start with this activity, a number and me. In the chat, I'm going to give you some time also to think it through. Um, here are five numbers, and I would like for you to choose one of these five numbers and share or think through how this number relates to you in any way, in any way. So I'm going to give you this time to choose one number, and you may share in the chat how this number relates to you. Thank you so much. As 2019 is very, very memorable. Oh, Ryan, thank you so much. Four million, roughly about the population of your state. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm seeing a lot of things. <laughs> 2019, when you turn 40, yes, <laughs> and so on and so forth. But there is a purpose of me choosing these numbers. And the purpose is that of that is to bring in this, 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 this different pandemic that we're also experiencing. So 71%, the oceans cover 71% of the planet with these marine wastes lie a variety of marine habitats, including the polar waters, underwater seagrass beds, and colorful coral leaves, reefs. Actually, um, if you have been following Simon Shows You Maps on Facebook, he also has one on Twitter. He has in his January 20, 31st post, a beautiful graphic, a beautiful graph showing um, the map where you could see only a portion of the, the Earth's um, composition of water and land, and 71% is covered by oceans. Four million. Oceana, if you're familiar with Oceana, and I, again, in the, in the slide deck, I have included there a link to oceana.org, has protected four million square miles of ocean habitat. And this has been going on as they work through to protecting the most important and 
productive marine areas in order to increase the biodiversity and abundance of the world's oceans and has already protected almost 4 million square miles of ocean habitat. 1 billion. Restoring oceans can feed 1 billion people a healthy seafood meal a day. Imagine that, dear friends. In 2019, I know you've mentioned about um, COVID and so on and so forth, but imagine this, in 2019, Amazon claimed that they have generated more than 460 million pounds of plastic and that they delivered about three and a half billion packages alone by Amazon using plastics, styrofoams, pillows, bubble wraps, and so on and so forth. And those are all impacting our oceans, our lives, our future, us. So let's pause and think deeply about the information I just shared. What resonated with you about the numbers? What questions might you have or ideas or thoughts? about these numbers. True, feeding a billion people a day, using awareness or using numbers to create awareness in our classrooms, and having that dialogue about how we are connected with others, not just within our family, not just within our community, but locally as well as globally. And so I mentioned about global issues because the predicament we're currently experiencing, the impact of COVID-19, the climate change, and so on and so forth, that we as citizens of the world have to work towards collaboratively to find answers and solutions since it is impacting all of us. The need to educate our students to be globally aware, to be globally minded, and to be globally proficient is imperative. I strongly advocate educating our students as global citizens, as this matters for our students, for our schools, for the future of humanity. While a growing number of parents and educators understand the importance of these goals, it is also important for us to be thinking of ways to educate our, student, our students to advance social inclusion and human rights as well. So I highlighted Fernando Raymer's um, quote here because I have also been uh, following a lot of his books and a lot of his work in terms of messaging, um, global competencies for our students from K through 16 and above and beyond as well. And so I am sharing with you in the next few slides the different aspects as to where I drew my disruptive numbers um, tool. And the work of Eric Gustine's um, Reading and Writing the World with Mathematics has been an, a very, very inspiring um, uh, resource for me. Teaching Mathematics for Social Justice is aiming for developing our students' social political consciousness in addition to teaching mathematics content. In his 
um, social justice pedagogical goals and his mathematics pedagogical goals. He spoke about reading and writing the world with mathematics, referring to the goals within formal education to learn mathematics, as well as goals outside of formal education, and that is to use mathematics to change the world. Dr. Gutierrez's um, framework as well has inspired me to look on or to continue working on rehumanizing mathematics and explicating her four key dimensions of access, achievement, identity, and power. To understand this, this stance, especially the, the tension that is caused by at the crossroads of these four elements, helped me to be very reflective about how we successfully balance all four components. And so in continuing to, in, in her work of rehumanizing mathematics, she also posited these eight um, elements of our framework. Participation, positioning, cultures, histories, windows, mirrors, living practice, broadening mathematics, creation, body emotions, and ownership. And all of these components, all of these eight, have helped me frame something that will be very tangible in the different classrooms or learning experiences or learning spaces that we're in, especially with students, whether that's face-to-face -face or in virtual setting. I try to um, not simplify, but something that I've been working with teachers throughout to center on several of the mathematics tasks, or I would say, uh, learning opportunities with, with students. And oftentimes I call them emancipatory learning experiences. These five instead of eight. And so I have um, included some prompts or reflective questions as to how we can invite a lot of our educators and their families as well to think through, to think through these five lenses and how they can bring about engaging mathematics tasks through the lens of social justice. And so as we continually do this, that we are also advocating to having our students name and claim their mathematical identity as we ourselves educators continue to develop our, our mathematical identity as well. So the structure of the disruptive numbers as a tool for me has three components, and I call them three A's, awareness, acknowledgement, action, as well as advocacy. And for each part of this structure, I think through three levels. The challenge when I'm trying to present that either in a classroom or a professional learning setting, the implication of that challenge and the opportunity for growth, the opportunity for, for a welcoming um, learning opportunities for us as educators as well as for students. And so awareness. The challenge is access to creating a safe and brave space where a learning environment is welcoming and students feel their sense of belonging is a, still is a challenge. Access to creating knowledge about our communities or other communities and the programs that serve them is controlled by people outside those communities who also often control the questions being asked. And so the implication is that when a voice is missing from the table, the answer we get are insufficient. We may perpetuate bias and fail to find out and fail to find the truth. So the opportunity is to have that sense of awareness, speaking or knowing who we are, the I, the you, the we, the us, in the learning space created for courageous discourse, knowing ourselves, our biases, our mindset, our beliefs, deepen our ability to face the truth, that there is more to learn about the nature of disrupting the status quo also recognizing the power dynamic that makes it tempting to compromise 
what matters most for our students' lives and our lives as well. In the acknowledgement um, structure, the validity is viewed as a credible source or sources when talking about the issues that affect the lives of our students and their families. And when voices from our underserved students are not viewed with authority, in many instances are swayed away from those with power, valid information are far from reality. Acknowledgement is valuing tangible and intangible resources that strengthen the foundation to finding the truth. So the implication of this is when bias information or data are produced, Knowledge is marred with obscurity to better understand what are at stakes. This implicates a diminished value of the voices of our community. Our students are marginalized students, right? And their families. Therefore, we encourage that our community, our community's wisdom, our students' knowledge and understanding are centered to paint a full picture that is elevating students' position, especially our black and brown, to affirm the assets they bring to the learning space is so impactful. The opportunity here is that value the validity of the diversified voices of our students their knowledge, their cultures, their histories, their languages and backgrounds. Center race in the development of learning opportunities. Acknowledge the challenges that come with these and be courageous to face them as it heightens enlightenment for those seeking for more. Continue to deepen the relationship with our students and their families and strengthen the sense of belonging with our students. As for action and advocacy, our action towards the issues and um, challenges presented necessitates some of the decisions that we make. And so forming those foundations to take, to, to take our work towards inviting ownership and authorship of learning is really, really is important. And so as we, as I continue this presentation as well, the next few slides is speaking about the importance of understanding global citizenship, why it matters, and how I I anchor the next activity that I'm going to share with you from the understanding of global education as well. So if you're familiar of the sustainable development goals, and again, it has also the link that I'm going to be sharing with you. The 17 goals that we have here have been um, in 2015, and correct me if I'm wrong, 2015, when several nations come together and agreed to have 17 of these global goals to create a better world and to end or to address the urgency of ending climate change, poverty, and so on and so forth by 2030. And we're now in 2021. The question is, where are we now in our goal towards achieving the sustainable global goals? And so as we continue to message the importance of being globally competent or the importance of developing our global citizens, that we review some of our global, global goals and our step towards or our actions towards um, achieving, striving to have these goals be actualized in the communities that where we live. So as I continue throughout, I anchored with the importance of developing as well as supporting our students to be globally competent, as well as global, um, encouraging them to be global citizens of our, of our community, 
that this disruptive number as a tool also has some four parts when presenting some um, mathematics task. A launch, explore, connect, and summarize are four steps that I could think of when I'm presenting several of the lessons or several of the activities to use numbers to disrupt those thinking that for us to aim for the truth and an understanding of how those numbers or da data or information is also impacting the lives that we have. And so in the next few slides that I have here, um, we have, I'm going to um, show you some images and we'll have an engagement as to how or what these images um, bring forth to your understanding about taking some steps towards global citizenship as well. So, in this particular image, and again, using the chat box, what do you think is going on in this picture? Loss of ice, melting, snowball, there's a big snowball, frosty snowball, and so on and so forth. And you're right. True. I, it's something, maybe some glacier, some kind of material. Well, this image actually is a huge piece of styrofoam packaging. It looks like a snowball. Right? I'm thinking of skiing right now. It's a ski week here. But it had been this this tight huge piece of styrofoam packages had was caught in a, a in a bobbing and slowly breaking down um, tiny islet somewhere in the Pacific, and this was and I'm just going to show you where it is and I probably some of you knows this place but this tiny little um, very very small island midway is located between and I can see my former country over there and the US and this was caught in one of the tiny islets in midway in midway which is located about 1100 miles it says northwest of pearl harbor in hawaii it has two main islands but there are many many environment contaminants in this tiny little island that resulted from 90 years of military operations contaminants include um, pesticides petroleum hydrocarbons, metals, and on and on and on and on. True, it is thousand, thousand of miles away from, from me, from you, from us, but the impact it has worldwide is devastating. And again, in, when we share this slide deck as well, I have the link there with some, um, animations that speaks to what's currently been um, going on in this tiny, tiny little island. So the question is, what have we done? I know Midways is a tiny, tiny island thousands away from, thousands of miles away from us. But it has been a space, it has been a place where garbage, liters, contaminants, plastics, trash are present. Now let's self-reflect as part of that lesson 
that gives us to explore of what we do in our daily lives. The question is, do you drink from bottled water? Do you use plastic utensils? Do you use paper bags? Do you use plastic straw when drinking? How are we being responsive to our ways, to our, to our ways of doing things at home and wherever we are? Because those tiny little things that we do, yes, those coffee, coffee cups, water bottles, bags, once they're thrown away, they do not end up somewhere, right? They, they end up in landfills, landfills, but also in oceans. And so as I continue to um, share with you again, as you could see it, uh, uh, in the top of my slide deck after the launch, we have explore and more exploration to one of the issues that I'm, I'm trying to present here. I also use a video to again invite the students and participants to think through about the impact of the daily things we do. So this is, we tried the video earlier and <laughs> we have a little bit of, um, uh, uh, we we're challenged to show the video, but I have it in there, a link to this um, about four minutes and 30 seconds video about why we need to stop plastic pollution in the oceans, wherever that, wherever we are you know, for good. And I, I invite you to, um, once you have a copy of this slide deck as well, to uh, watch the video because it also gives us a lot of numbers to be thinking about and hopefully to disrupt those numbers that is presented in this video. So besides that, um, launch, explore, and more explore, that we also, and or I also intentionally connect those to mathematics, some standards such as middle school, even um, fourth grade and fifth grade. And we can always draw from um, upper elementary standards as well, whether that's in algebra or geometry and beyond. Some things that we can think about how those numbers are connected in our mathematics standards. And so this is also a Desmos activity that I have here. And again, um, we can also drop the link, um, uh, Lee, if they would like to um, explore how the mathematics is being uh, presented in this Desmos activities, where it's only a three um, um, slide, I would say, um, Desmos activity in which Several of the information that I've showed from the previous slide, when they, when you're exploring about um, plastics and the impact of the use of plastics, are also embedded in this Desmos activity. And there is another slide there that asks you for um, your estimation, uh, graphing it, how that may look like from a certain year to another year. And maybe some kids or some, some of our students may draw it uh, linearly or exponentially. And however that their um, uh, graphical representation of this could also um, ask or have some prompts for them to reflect about why they do that graph and so on and so forth. And so on with that particular discourse. So, Summary is also taking an action. Summary is also reflecting about all those different components in a certain activity. Summary is also thinking about how we are responding to the challenge of keeping our environment safe and healthy for us and future generations as well. So the last few uh, five slides that I shared with you has those four components of a lesson or an activity. 
launching it with some invitations to um, invite, encourage, um, motivate them to know more about a certain issue that is presented, exploring it with deep understanding from primary sources, where that's Oceana, or uh, I also link another um, resource there that you could see, and several are interactive as well, connecting it with some standards in mathematics, some in the U.S., we have the content standards and the standards for mathematical practice. And I'm not so sure from, uh, from other countries as well, but it speaks to our content, mathematics content, as well as our habits of mind to develop among our students. And summarizing as well as reflecting is a way to then try to move into now I know, now what, what can I do? What might I do? to truly make a meaningful impact to my family, to my community worldwide as well. So I've, I've presented several of those components and my question is how might I or how might you or how might, how might we disrupt the devastation of the world's marine life in a local or global scale? And again, in the chat, we would love to see some of your ideas, how you might use some of the information that I shared, or how might you take this and tweak this and have it um, be used to engage your students or your community as well to respond to one of the challenges or to respond to one of the global goals in terms of um, keeping our marine life healthy for us and for the future generations that we have. Mm -mm. True, Christina, grab and go, lunches and plastic utensils. And I also highlighted here uh, a quote from Elon Musk, when something is important enough, you you do it even if the odds are not in your favor. And so, um, again, towards the end, I just would like to sh um, present to you that the three A's in the structure that I presented is also. Um, visible in the, uh, the lesson parts or the task parts that um, I have um, shared with you as well. In this particular slide, I again showcase the processes that I have, awareness, acknowledgement, action and advocacy, the purpose of why we're doing that, why we are um, having our students or educators experience that, and some of the strategies that you may be able to use when um, um, highlighting uh, the different processes of the disruptive numbers as a tool. So in this slide, I have a link to several of the disruptive numbers um, activities that I have created and put together as a tool. And again, as we share, this is slide deck. All of this is going to be linked to the slide deck as well. But most importantly, I'm going to share this um, link with you, Beatly Disruptive Numbers. This has all of the different um, lessons and uh, other resources that I have compiled together. Thank you so much, Lee. Lee has dropped the link in the chat. And this also includes um, resources from Dr. Um, Karikoka, from Dr. Rochelle Gutierrez, from our TOTUS Mathematics for All, uh, from Dr. Eric Gutstein, and, and a lot more. And so this is going also, and I continue to add on to this one as I uh, develop more lessons um, uh, uh, about disruptive numbers. 
And I am truly, truly inspired by, by all of these different books. I know there's, there's a lot more besides this. But I'm so inspired by all of these books because I draw strength and I draw, I draw inspiration from the different books that I'm showcasing with you in this, uh, in this particular slide. And so as we go through, um, these are the different parts of the um, webinar or the presentation that I made. And I hope I was able to uh, achieve the goals that I um, strive to do, accomplish in this presentation. We have those different tiny little activities that um, um, make uh, th that that um, summarize the story of my presentation. And so I leave with you again with this, in the pursuit to challenge inequities in mathematics teaching and learning, disruptive numbers is a tool to urge mathematics discourse to uncover hidden stories that perpetrate partisanship in our society. And so I challenge you, dear friends, as you have learned something from this presentation, that share that, share that takeaway with the uh, um, with fellow educators within your spheres of influence, because it is a blessing for me to share those resources with you. And I really, really thank you for attending the presentation that I have uh, tonight, today, this morning, wherever you are. Maraming salamat. That's in my home language. Agiyamanak. That's in my dialect. Thank you. Thank you very much for presenting, uh, Bernadette. Um, I didn't see many questions in the chat, but I know a lot of people were asking throughout about the various resources that you had um, given in the various web links. And um, we had uh, several links that, that were done throughout, um, but you also have that link that's pinned at the top of the, the chat. Thank you so, so much, Lee, yes. Um, and uh, Bernadette, I saw that that uh, some of the the links in that one document were uh, for Desmos activities. Yes. Um, and so um, I'm going to click on all those links and I'm going to create a collection. And oh. I'll I'll share that collection with you um, in an email so that you can then add that to the document for everybody. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank yeah, you. No problem. It'll take me just about five minutes to do that, <laughs> and I'll send that to you in an email. So. All right. thank you very much for presenting tonight um there's a lot of great resources uh that you shared with us um next week we have advanced algebra with financial applications and algebra two alternative for struggling students actually that's not next week that's in two weeks on march 2nd so that's advanced algebra with financial applications and algebra two alternative for struggling students um i'd also like to mention that we are looking for Global Math Department webinar attendees to share how the Global Math Department has impacted the work in their classrooms. So if there's something that you use from this presentation tonight and you wanna share how it's impacted what you're doing in your classrooms, we invite you to share with us on June 29th, 2021. Uh, we're looking for about four presenters to share for 10 to 15 minutes each. If you're interested in doing that, you can email us at globalmathdepartment at gmail.com. Um, also, if you know of any potential speakers we're starting to book for our 2021-2022 school year, uh, please have them email us as well at globalmathdepartment at gmail.com. Right, we look forward to seeing all of you in about two weeks. So long, everyone.